Hey guys, we are here with Mike Bethel at launch. Uh, the creative mind behind the indie game Thomas Was Alone, the That's geometric right. puzzle platformer. Mm -hmm. The emotional twist, it was amazing. <laughs> it was uh, just released on Steam, well, actually four months ago, wasn't it? Uh, November. November, actually, yeah. <laughs> no, he means the PlayStation Store. You just recently on the PlayStation Store. PlayStation, PlayStation yeah, a couple months ago. Right. Um, and he's here to answer a few questions for us, which is um, quite cool. A lot of the questions are of course from the community through Twitter and through, through Steam th Steam groups and such. Uh, a few are from a guy called Bunglist, Hidden Fang, uh, Zeke Death. Uh, these are the people. These guys sound awesome. Yeah, yeah. they're pretty Some cool. Some good names, good um, solid names. So the first question of course is, what inspired you the most for Thomas? Um, did you have any concepts from any other games that you were enjoying at the time? Mm. You know, did you want to include any of that? Um, well, I kind of I wanted to do a platformer. I wanted to do specifically an indie pretentious platformer because I was just seeing so many of them that I thought were pretty cool. Um, and I just, yeah, I just kind of wanted to emulate, or not emulate, but just kind of take part in what seemed to be a really cool scene. So, um, so lots of lots of platformers, kind of you know things, old school stuff like Mario. But I wasn't I wasn't a big console gamer as a kid, so I didn't play those games like when they first came out. But I played them since I was interested, and then also kind of things like World of Goo. World of Goo was kind of the first game that I looked at and went, that was a guy, that was, you know, a couple of guys who had a day job when I made that. And as someone who was at that point working in industry, kind of trying to fit indie around that, that was very inspiring. So, yeah. um, now, during development, did you have any really mm. particular ideas that you wanted to include into Thomas? Like, that you, you spent a while working on mm. or thinking up in the shower or in bed and stuff? <laughs> and you just couldn't implement them for time reasons or stylistic reasons that you just couldn't put in the game. I think, well, definitely in the art side, there was a lot of stuff, and there's actually some YouTube videos of like some demos where like the world's building itself out of bricks and stuff, which were really quite fun, but they were, they wouldn't work technically. Um, and other things, um, I really wanted to have a double jumping character, not a double jumping character, I've got one of those, a wall jumping character, because I was into Super Meat Boy, but it just <laughs> didn't make any sense in the context of the game, and it kind of, with carrying characters, it became really weird and messy, so it ended up being removed, but that was definitely something that was on the list that kind of had to get removed. But that's that's how you make games. You you kind of you throw stuff in, see what works, throw some stuff out, add some stuff in. It's just that kind of rolling process. Um, and during development, <laughs> this is such a weird question. Mm. During development, did you start giving the characters names as you were developing the game, or did it? And did you continue referring to them as Thomas, like through and through? Or was it sort of after development and after release that you started oh, no. really talking about them? Well, no, no, the, the names, I mean, the, 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 uh, the moment I decided I'm going to make a character that can double jump, for example, at that point, even before it was in the game, I'd named that character, I'd worked out what the, the kind of, what their narrative beats would be and kind of how they'd grow as a character through the game, stuff like that, their kind of, their arcs. Um, so it was very, the story in the game kind of happened hand in hand and I think that's why the story kind of works is that actually there were, there, it wasn't a case that I made a game and then wrote a story, it was kind of all happening organically together which is something that's lucky in indie because obviously they're made by so few people that I can do that, I can say, um, you know, this character for narrative reasons needs to not have any levels for three levels and there's no game designer to argue with me and no writer to, to have to change it, it's all me so I can kind of yeah. do stuff like that, yeah. Nice. And um, did you have any like specific process, like when you hit a really difficult part in development, if you, you couldn't get past the solution, or you had a really, you you do you have a process that you follow to sort of get a solution to that problem? Uh, just keep working really hard like that to be honest that's it um often a night's sleep helps or moving on i you know I, because i was doing all the jobs if something wasn't if i wasn't enjoying something or if something was getting stuck um i could just go and do something else for a bit um take a couple of weeks doing something else and then come back to it um and that works as well as, as an approach but yeah i think um most of the time just you have to work through those problems and google is very useful <laughs> now uh, this is a question from Bunglist that he's really quite interested in. Mm. He's wondering what came first. Like, was it the idea of a geometric jumping puzzle? Or was it the strong narrative? Did you have sort of a storyline in your head that you wanted to, to, to apply to characters? Um, well, I think it was the, 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 the mechanic came first, so the characters jumping around 
working together. Um, but for a very early stage, it was kind of clear that if there's two, if there's more than one character, then it's going to be a game about that interaction and that kind of. So the story stuff started right at the start. But no, I would say that mechanics kind of led that first prototype, and then we started thinking about kind of. Okay, so what's what's this about? Who are the characters? With the with the very first Flash prototype, we called it Thomas Was Alone, just almost by just by default we needed a name. And we called it Thomas Was Alone, and because the first rectangle you see was red, everyone started calling that one Thomas. And that kind of obviously through development, as I said, the characters kind of it, the story was more intertwined. But yeah, I'd definitely say the, the mechanics came first. Okay, cool. Um were you expecting the kind of response that you got? from your game no I'd be very arrogant <laughs> if I if I if I assumed that no it was it was very pleasant um it's not it's not a mega hit but it's kind of found an audience and it's known by people which is nice um no no I, I wasn't expecting it to be as, as well received as it was but I'm exceptionally grateful that it has been cool and the the last question that I really sort of want to ask you this is like from me personally <laughs> okay you've been mentioning on Twitter about project two can you tell us anything about what's in store no. for Project You cannot at all. No. Um, what can I say? I can say it's not Thomas Was Alone 2. Okay. It's definitely, I'm not interested in, there's no point, you know, going indie, being able to make whatever I want when making a sequel. Yeah. It's kind of boring. Um, it's 3D. It's got, you know, it's, it's still put story of uh, focus, but there's some stuff in there exploring kind of user-generated content. Is something I'm very interested in. Players kind of making stuff, telling their own stories, is something I'm experimenting with. It's it's coming along. I'm going to be um, kind of announcing it and doing a trailer kind of August oh, time. Cool. Yeah, so nice. it's it's not far off now, yeah. which is scary, obviously. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's get, it's getting there. It's getting there. Is there any point you want to add about any of what we've spoken about today, or? Uh, no, just just keep on keeping on. Have you yeah, got any questions? Nice. Yeah, I was just wondering um, the extent and the value in both uh, Let's Players and the YouTube and the Twitch communities, <laughs> both being able to make a game mm. as you know Total Biscuit and various other and Let's Play, oh, not Let's Play. <laughs> yeah, don't don't call <laughs> don't, Total don't Biscuit. Don't catch on. Don't, 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 don't do that. And, um, and the ability there is to have to destroy your game. That if they, if word starts to get around that this is not the greatest game ever. Yeah, well, I mean to be fair, that's that's it, it, all. I think what YouTube's done, what Twitch um, and stream, you guys stream on Twitch presumably. Yeah. 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 What what Twitch has done, what YouTube's done, what what Let's Players, what Total Biscuit, what all these people have done, is it's basically I said those are seven things. Let's yeah. Players, Total Biscuit. Yeah. Um, they are. There's a. They basically they've um, accelerated word of mouth. I think that's the key thing. Is that they they've not created new conversations. I don't think. But I think what they have done is they've focused those conversations. So someone like Total Biscuit saying, you know, doing a video about a game and and it having lots of sales as a result. Essentially, what that is is that's exactly the same as you going down the pub and telling your friend about a cool game you played. Um, only he's telling it to five hundred thousand a million yeah. two million people it's exactly the same thing so in terms of the positive effect it's massive it can really speed up the process of people getting to hear about your game which is all marketing really is it's just kind of trying to get people to know that you exist basically um so there's that um in terms of the negative effect yes but make a good game like is the obvious sort like i know like, if a Let's Player says they don't like a game, and it's happened with Thomas, there's been a few Let's Players who weren't big fans, it's fair enough. Um, it's it's kind of, it's there's enough people saying it's good that people go, well, that's one opinion, that's one opinion, and they go and make their own opinion and, and you know, play it or buy it or whatever. Um, I, I, I think that if you make a game that is universally disliked by YouTubers, then you've made a game that's not going to find an audience anyway, um, and it's maybe it will speed up the process of you failing. But I, I think it's just the way it is. Make good games. It's so the easiest solution. Game is going to fail inevitably. No, not inevitably. It, it will. It will. It might well make a bit of money before it fails. But it's. But if people buy something and then it's rubbish. And enough, and enough of a percentage of people feel that way. You might make money from those first people, but you won't make money when you bring right, out another right, game. Right. You know, so it's it's that I think. Thank you very much. For yeah. no problem. Pleasure. You can of course buy Thomas Was Alone on the Steam Store, the PlayStation Store. PlayStation Network. ThomasWasAlone.com is where you can find all the links to those places. And yeah. most recently, the Humble Indie Bundle. Yeah, for a little bit longer. It's uh, it's I think next Tuesday. Five days, I think I yeah. saw it on full. Yeah. 
So thank you very much thank for you. watching. We shall see you again soon.